There, welcome back. Uh, it's time to set up our API class uh, and to do a few things that are required for authentication. So let's go ahead in our project. Um, so we already have our models here. Uh, so I'm going to right click on, on uh, the project and say new PyDev module. And I'm just going to call this for a name. I'm going to call it api.py. Uh, let's see, we don't even need the .py, it'll add that for us. Remember last time we called ours uh, Movie Quotes API, but I think just API is, is just fine. It's, it's a little bit more symmetric with just having models and then API. All right. So I'm going to call this guy and just make it empty. All right. Uh, take a second here. Okay, so what are we going to do? We have some, some imports to, to take care of, so let's, let's go ahead and do that. So let's start off by importing endpoints. All right, so we'll need that. Uh, let's import uh, the message uh, remote procedure calls here. So proto RPC um, was from this. Uh, what else do we need? Uh, so we're going to need um, our different models here. So from models, we're going to import, what did we have? We had a student, we had an assignment, and we had a grade entry, right? We're going to need all three of them here in our API. Uh, and it looks like that's it for, for imports. Uh, so let's go ahead and make a class, and we will call this guy Grade Recorder uh, API. And remember that this guy is going to subclass uh, the service class that's in ProtoRPC. So it's going to be ProtoRPC uh, dot remote dot capital S service. Okay. Uh, and for now, I'll just make that pass. We'll be filling that in uh, in future lessons. And let's go ahead and make an API server. So we usually call ours app uh, equals endpoints um, dot API, and you'll see one of them is API server. And then within this, we need a list of API classes, and we only have one again. So just, just grade, let's see, recorder API. And then there was this uh, parameter here, restricted, that we set to false. Okay. Uh, Let's see, just gonna double check app.yaml right now just to make sure we had to set it up. So, so when we launch the Explorer, we want it to go into, into api.app, right? So let's just double check that. I think we did that last time. Yeah, we did. So we, we had endpoints here. So whenever they um, try to do anything with the Explorer, it's gonna launch api.app. And again, you see where that's coming from. It's the API module and then the app uh, object there, okay? Which is our server. Okay, uh, great. So the, the big thing that we're going to do is annotate this guy. Um, so let's go ahead and, and do this. Uh, so you remember that, that we used something that was like endpoints.api. And then if we hit control space, we get a whole a whole, whole mess of, of, of options here. Um, we are going to be filling out a few more this time than we did before because of authentication. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and start chugging through these guys. So um, the first one is name. Uh, we're just going to call it grade recorder. The version, uh, v1 is just fine. Description, uh, really whatever you want to put here. Uh, usually I just put something like, you know, just a little bit more human readable, but but grade recording API, something like that. Um, our host name, uh, and remember that this is going to be uh, the same, uh, it's going to be where you're running it when it's deployed. So your username, and then grade hyphen recorder. Um, dot app spot dot com uh, so something like that all right and then let's see let's hit enter here so we can still whoops let's go back what I wanted to do is was, was to hit enter so it goes on to the next line um, okay so what do we have so some new things here so the next things are going to be audiences uh, and allowed clients IDs in fact that's that's pretty much what we're gonna blow away here so blow away everything else so we don't need scopes uh, and everything else on here, canonical name, auth, owner domain, all these guys right here, uh, we do not need, okay? Uh, but we are gonna have to give each of these values. So let's start off with, with audiences. Each one is gonna be a, a list. Uh, so in square brackets uh, for audiences, we're going to use, um, well, we're gonna have to make some, some constants here, but these are gonna be client IDs, right? So um, I'm gonna use web client ID for this guy. And then allowed client IDs is going to be a list with a number of them. So let's actually go ahead and, and at least define some stubs here. Um, these are going to be things that we're going to get from the um, from the the developers console, right? So we'll we'll, we'll generate those guys shortly. Uh, but web client ID, let's see, uh, 
I'm just gonna, they're, they're gonna be strings, so I'm just gonna leave it as an empty string for now, just so it compiles. Uh, we're also gonna have client IDs for um, any of the, um, the other clients that we want. So, not sure whether you're doing Android or, um, or iOS, if you're doing this, this backend stuff right here. So let's go ahead and make, make both of them. So we will set it as Android client ID, like that. And then we will have, uh, let's see, iOS uh, client ID, which is also an empty string. Okay. Uh, and then the allowed client IDs then are gonna be any any one of these, uh, plus the Explorer, right? So there's there's a few different things here. So let's, let's go ahead and add, and add these guys in. So the first one is actually a built-in constant. So endpoints uh, dot um, API Explorer client ID, and you'll see that show up here, okay? Um, so this is a constant. This is this is a built-in one, so that we can always uh, we can always access um, this API um, authenticated from the Explorer. Okay, uh, and then we're going to have other ones. So since I'm going to be accessing it from the web, uh, I'll have a web client ID, and then we might as well add both the Android and the iOS client IDs right here. Okay, uh, and that looks like it's going a little bit over over there. So I'm going to wrap this guy around to the next line. Uh, so so something like that. All right. Um, a, a brief word about these these things. Uh, that we're really not going to be able to do too much more with this right here. Um, allowed client IDs are here to um, in order to protect the back end, right? So they're essentially saying that you know the only clients that are going to be allowed to access um, this API are going to be these following ones, right? And we're going to generate these. So we're going to have control over over what these are. So any sort of valid client is going to have uh, one of these IDs, right? Audiences is actually something that's set up for Android only, or it's used by an Android only, um, although it certainly won't, won't hurt if you're using it with iOS. Um, but, but in Android, what it does is, is um, the client is actually going to know about um, the web client ID, uh, and it essentially gives a little bit of protection to the client so that it knows that its authentication token is only being used um, with this particular back end. Right? Um, anyway. So that's 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 a bit about that there, and those are really the only the only two new things that that we're going to be adding to the API as a whole. Okay, uh, so where are we going to get these guys? Um, we're going to get them uh, from the the developers console. That's our next lesson, right? We'll see you then.